Hey guys, I'm with Bruch through Brow. How you doing, Bruch? I think I'm doing well. As I like to say, I'm thriving, not just surviving. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, Bruch is known as the Why Wizard. And why are you known as that? Um, so it's a, something I came up with. I've been doing a lot of networking recently, and I've been trying to find a catchy way of getting people interested because everybody sees life coaches all the time. Um, and there's a lot of opinions, good and negative, about what life, what life coaches do. And I like to separate myself from that. Um, I try not to do things that everybody else does. So uh, I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek's Start With Why, his yeah. TED Talk and his book. Um, and it's just been kind of like a lifelong thing where I've always felt like there's a mission and a purpose, something that we're all meant to accomplish. Uh, he calls it the why. Mm -hmm. so after reading that, and I've been doing a lot of thinking, going to networking events, just being automatically boxed into the same thing as life coach. I was just sitting there thinking, you know, what can I do to separate myself? And all of a sudden the idea of why wizard came to me. It's, it's a really awesome name. Um, the why wizard. Uh, it's like just immediately catchy. Sometimes not using the title of a life coach can actually enhance what you even, even if that's what you're doing, can enhance your overall brand branding of what people think of, of what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. I was, I was once for the weekend, I went away for the weekend with my family. And I was at a synagogue where I was speaking to the rabbi who was completing his, um, getting his, uh, I believe he was becoming a licensed marriage family therapist, which is something I was interested in looking into. And I was speaking to him about it. And he asked me, oh, well, you know, what do you do? And I said, I'm a life coach. And immediately he got this look of like, oh, great, another one of these people. Yeah. Um, because unless you really know your trade well and you know where the parameters and, and the boundaries of what a life coach can and should do, um, it, things could, God forbid, get messy. So I also, again, I, I didn't want to box myself into this general, you know, I didn't want to lead people to the land of assumption when I said I'm a life coach. So yeah, yeah, why yeah. was there's a catchy way of, of differentiating it immediately gets people interested. Um, and then I can ex explain. I think that's, that's a really good uh, point um, in that sometimes like the immediate perception of life coach, a lot of people is like, Oh, you're a life coach. Like, what do you know? What do you know about life? Like how, like, you know, what, what can you tell me that, other people can't tell me about life and why are you qualified to teach me about life? Whatever they think it is, they don't really understand what coaching is or they don't, they don't really understand what the life coaching methodology is. Um, and, you know, sometimes I think part, partly it's, it's like, it's, it's a fault of us as life coaches. Like we are, um, we haven't taken the, we, we've kind of not taken the time to really market that terminology uh, well enough and, and to really brand life coach as something that's kind of looked up to in high regard. Um, but also I, I don't really know what the exact problem comes from, but it's definitely something to be aware of. I don't think we should abandon the term because it's a nice term if we can articulate it clearly and get to what it really means. Right. A hundred percent. And um, again, there was a lot of that, that kickback, from the term life coach, but again, it, it's, it is who we are, you know, it, it is yeah. what we do. And, and I think to me, it was the idea of being able to brand myself as a more specific, you know, a while ago, I went to this uh, um, small training slash workshop by a lady who is a, I think she calls herself a proactivity or productive coach or something along those lines um, where she kind of works within businesses and, and business owners. Um, at, at the end of it, I went over to her. I was really excited to introduce myself. I said, oh, you know, I'm also a life coach. She said, oh, great. Well, what do you do? I said, oh, well, I help people with finances, with their health, their relationships, and with business. And she's like, no, no, no. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Right. Pick one thing yeah. and focus on that one thing. Okay. And that was also like, at first, I didn't like it. But then after she said that and I thought about it more, I'm like, you know, that's true. You have to have that one thing. We can't possibly cover all the bases. But when you focus on one area, that will lead uh, to balance and 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 other other areas. Um, so, like with the why, it's to me, it's the why ways it is is gaining clarity um, on your purpose and what it is that you how you want to be living your life rather. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of ties into all the other areas. And I I don't really work with people right now on finances. I can be very basic. Um, also, health. It's not something yet that I've mastered. Mm -hmm. So I work in the areas that. I've so to speak mastered or, or can plug into other people. And then for the things I can't, I refer them out, but it's, yeah, the, the idea of, you know, yes, we are life coaches and that is we're coaching people in life, but right. there's many aspects of life. So right. what is the niche? Yeah. 
Exactly. So, uh, you know, that's a great way of putting it. I like that you said that balance comes from focusing on one area. It doesn't necessarily come from trying to do all things. Uh, I think that's a really good point and interesting way to, can, like, to think about it uh, is that when you have focus, then you can have balance. Um, you know, I, the way I see it is like you start with a really specific niche. Um, you know, what generally tends to happen is you start kind of, you, you kind of, it's okay to start a little generally because when you, you're as a coach, you're starting out as a coach and you just want to get your feet wet. So when you're really, really young and starting out, you can start generally. But then pretty soon after that, after you have a couple sample clients, you, got, you niche down if you really want to take it to the next level. Then later on, you can you get really big, then you can kind of go generally again. Um, and then it's, it's kind of like this process of like, you're general, then you're really specific. Then you're a little more general, then you're really specific. And, and that's the way I see it growing is like, as you grow, you can get a little less narrow and, and add a little more complexity to, to, what, to what your niche is. And because uh, a lot of times what happens is someone will say like, oh, I, you know, why can't I, why do I have to niche down? Like Tony Robbins doesn't niche down or um, uh, like whatever so-and-so brand, they, they focus on all areas, but really they didn't start that way. Like they grew in terms, in, in steps, in terms of like just focusing on one area. And, and, and back, and back when Tony Robbins was starting, it was a whole, there wasn't really coaches he was competing with. So it was, different in terms of that life coaching itself was was a niche um but we're in a really different place than than he was so yeah there's just a lot of things to consider when it comes to niching down yeah 100 percent. and when, when i first started when I, I i completed my coaching certification and i was like I, even my coach trainer talked about having an avatar but my avatar at the time was teams i'm like i was going to do everything with teams Mm. And as time developed and I started to gain more experience coaching and then more experience in life, I realized that my, the, the one area where I was really strong in was relationships. That mm. was something I had put an immense amount of effort into studying and understanding from personal experience, from things I had seen. Um, so I started focusing on that. But then as life went on and my relationships increased, I saw, well, there's a relationship with yourself. There's a relationship with your spouse. Mm. There's a relationship with your friends. There's a relationship with your work. There's a relationship with the money. There's a relationship with your health. And it kind of like, like you're saying, you know, I, I niche down, but then that grew because it ties into everything. So you're, you're related to Simon Sinek and you're, and you're the why wizard. Um, so what is your why? So my why, as I said, is to educate and empower people to create the lives that they want to live. Mm. Um, I, not to, I don't want this to come across the wrong way. Um, I believe that a lot of us, are meant, I believe everybody is created with a mission and a purpose, um, something that only we can fulfill mm -hmm. um, and is unique to us. How we do that is up to us also. Uh, you know, we have to tap into the right sources. For me personally, um, having a regular nine to five job, showing up to work at a job that was just paying the bills was not what I wanted. Now I understand people need to do that. And listen, I work a nine to five job right now also. Yeah. Um, but for me, I always wanted to do something different, something out of the box. Right. Um, and I saw that education and educating people to create better lives for themselves was, was what I wanted to do, whether that was within relationships um, or within the life purpose and, and the career. And here's the thing, you can have a nine to five job and still be loving it. So it's not necessarily against the nine to five job, it's just what are you doing, you know? Right. Um, right. Um, so yeah, so that, that was my why, that, that is my why to educate and empower people to create the lives that they want, whether it is becoming financially free or whether it is finding the best job for them. Awesome. Yeah. That, I mean, that sounds like a great why. And, and I know, I know I'm thinking of the Simon Sinek model. I've definitely watched his TED talks, studied his books, leaders, he last, um, start with why. And, uh, I know like that framework to me, that's been so helpful and not just like articulating overall life vision but also specific like for me i find that to be a great framework for writing your about page for instance on your website start with why then go then go to how then go to the what um it comes in handy with like weird things such as copywriting and like um even just like presenting a speech i find it to be like you know helpful frameworks um in addition to just like a way to organize your identity um, and how you present yourself. 
Exactly. And, and it really is, it is your brand. Like I've been, I have a number of friends who are within different areas of social media marketing. I have a friend who's a photographer for the fashion industry. And I, we were talking and like, they have their brands and they've always asked me, what is my brand? Mm-hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? I, I'm Baruch Duba. Like that is my brand, but it never quite stuck because who's Baruch Duba? Like nobody knows who Baruch Duba is. Right, it's not right. a very successful brand. Yeah. Um, but then when I heard, when I came up with the Y wizard, it was like, Oh, that makes sense. Cause I'm very into, um, magic and like, I love reading fantasy books. So yeah. I'm very much into all of that. And the idea of this, you know, if you ever, if you ever take those personality tests, um, so I've taken some where they, like, they give you characters. I always came up as like the wise mentor or the wise, yeah. the wise wizard. So to me, it was like, it, it stuck perfectly. Um, and then just the why, because again, clarity on life purpose. Uh, um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Um, you, you were telling me last time that, um, you went through a lot of like training in terms of sales training and marketing training about like in regards to growing your business and so you can help more people. And, uh, you were struggling to find a sales process that really resonated with you. And then you told me that, um, you found a process now that resonates more fully and that's like relationship oriented sales. Can you tell us like a little bit about how that works and your story about uh, coming across that? Sure. Um, so I got married very young. Um, I think 24 years old. Um, and I, I had no college degree. I mean, I had a bachelor's in liberal arts or religious studies, but that wasn't really helping me get anywhere. Um, I was basically teaching at various schools because it was the first thing that I could do. And I, I love teaching again, that's the education part, but I was looking for other ways of creating income because education does not provide enough income to support your family off, not as a sole breadwinner. Right. So um, I reached out to different people. I, I started learning about um, LinkedIn writing, resume writing, essentially branding the person. That's what, when you're writing a real good LinkedIn profile or resume profile, or resume, you're branding yourself, you're selling yourself. So I, we started learning and studying the psychology of sales and marketing and how to market yourself where they want to hire you and it's not you looking for a job. Right. So there was a lot of background with that. Uh, but the, the thing with that that I was having an issue with was every time I got on a call, the part of me that just, well, I just wanted to give. Like I really did not want to charge people for these services, but I needed to make a living. Mm. But, but the way I was trained, it was just, you, you have to sell, you have to sell, you have to sell, you have to sell. And, and that's unfortunately the way it is. Nine out of 10 companies, that is what they're doing. They're selling because they need to get you in. So there's all sorts of techniques out there that are like that. And they just never resonated with me. Um, fast forward to a year and a half ago or so, my life was in shambles. I was, my life was falling apart. Um, and so once again, I was on the search for, for money, for income. And mind you, their LinkedIn resume thing never really worked out because I never, I just never applied myself to it. It just didn't, right. it didn't feel right. right. Um, so I was out looking for a way of creating income. So I went to a real estate workshop done by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, Nice. And I figured real estate is the way to go. And it was just a sales pitch. It was, again, it was the same thing where they were trying to get you into the, this base level, which would lead to the next level, which is cost more, et cetera, et cetera. But while there, I challenged myself to introduce myself to three people. Um, and the very first person I introduced myself has since become a mentor of mine, um, who was really in the, pa- in the span of a, a week, let's say, he completely changed my life around. Um, and how that started was he gave me a book called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg, ah. an absolutely amazing book. Um, it turned my marriage around right away because it's a, essentially it's a book about business, but it's written in the form of like a short novel. It's like 110 pages. And he talks about the five laws of stratospheric success. Law number one is add more value than you are being compensated for. Mm. Um, and to me, that was like, okay, I can do that. You know, I'm, I'm totally happy to, to give value. Right. The next thing was add more value uh, to more people. Mm. So going to, I don't want to re- say the whole book now. I just wrote it down. So I'm definitely going to get to it. Perfect. So it's an amazing book. And that started to change the way I looked at things. And then working with him, he was teaching me how to become a better person, father, husband, um, t- teacher, leader, just everything. And the one thing I saw was that he was pouring into me. And our relationship, and we spent hours on the phone talking outside of what we work together in business. Um, so 
I started trying that because again, the whole idea of the go-giver was you're giving of yourself without expecting anything in return. And I started reading a whole bunch of other books along those lines as well. But then I started going to networking events. Um, and I, my goal was not to sell myself. My goal was not to get clients. My goal was to meet people. As a matter of fact, I'm going to another one tonight in about an hour. Nice. Um, and my goal is who can I meet and how can I add value to their life? Mm. You know, and even if it's not me, if I can connect somebody to somebody else, you know, that's great. Um, a while back, I met a guy who's in social media marketing, um, digital marketing, and we got off, I think, the, after, right before the first time we talked, you and I talked, I had just gotten off a phone call with him for two and a half hours, and he just poured into me, and I was able to connect him to one of my other friends who was starting a business and is looking for a marketing. So just like that, he added value to me, and because we're you know, close because of the relationship we built. He didn't charge me anything for it because he's just giving me advice. But then I was able to bring him a paying client. And that's just the way it works. And now I can't tell you how many people I have contacting me now just from friends and from referrals and from LinkedIn because they see that the way I do things is I build relationships first. I'll talk to you. I'll get to know you. What are you looking for? How can I help you? If I can help you one-on-one, -on -one, uh, me helping you, great. If I can introduce you to somebody else, even better, you know. Um, and since I started putting relationships first, things have changed drastically. Again, it, it's that idea of when you're, when you're in business, you're essentially selling yourself. So why sell a fake version, you know? Sell yeah. the real you. Good products sell themselves, you know? Um, every new Apple iPhone sells itself. You don't have to sure. put any sales or marketing. So you be the best you can be, and people will come flocking to you. Yeah, no, I, I really wish everyone had that approach. And like you, you, too often you see like kind of canned sales pitches and kind of just like someone shoving you an offer that doesn't really even align with what you want. Um, and uh, just whenever someone is, is a value first person or a giving first person, I find it such a breath of fresh air. And, and like so many people don't approach their life. Maybe they say they do or they think they do, but too much in practice, very few people actually do that. And uh, it always stands out when someone does that. And, and I always want to return the favor too when, some, when someone is a, a giver first and not kind of a taker. A hundred percent. And Tony Robbins talks about the idea of creating raving fans as, as your clients. Yeah. And I was like, how do you create, like, well, I want you to be my, and I tried that. I tried going to the people within my network saying, hey, you know, I'm a great life coach, sign me up. I tried to create raving fans, but people, they, they weren't interested. I actually just posted on my LinkedIn profile a, an article um, called, uh, I titled it, uh, not, not Everything's a TED Talk, because I was sitting at my Friday night table with my wife and some friends of ours, and we were discussing a hot topic within the community right now, and one of the, one of the friends there piped up and said, Barlom, not everything is a TED Talk, because like, I always have like, this idea of where I'm going with my conversation. And it was an eye-opening moment for me, and, and like, her point was like, have an open conversation, and, and, and have a conversation. Don't try to steer the conversation and direct it in a certain direction to get the result that you want, even though we both agreed at the end of the day. But again, Tony talks about creating raving fans. And I realize now that the way to do that is just by pouring into people. Oh, yeah. Relationships. I, I totally agree with that. Like giving first. And it's kind of you, then you achieve your, you know, you can achieve your sales goals indirectly by not focusing on it. And I think that's often the case where you have a goal um, and the best way to, achieve it is to kind of approach it sideways or not really you know yeah like not go directly after it because then it's kind of it's the same thing with relationships and you would know but it's like you can't find your ideal spouse or whatever you're looking for if you're like looking for it directly um, exactly. you have to focus on yourself or you have to focus on something else um right. the same thing with sales it's like if you if you approach it too directly you end up shooting yourself in the foot Right. And another great book to read. And this is a book that when it starts off, it says you must read this book twice. Um, it's called Master Key to Riches by Napoleon Hill. Uh, and it's another brilliant book. And, and he talks about the same principles, essentially, because really all the success principles are, are one and the same. It just packaged right. differently. Right. Um, but he also he talks about, you know, going the extra mile. And because even if you're going the extra mile at a job that you don't like, eventually it's going to come back around to you. Oh, definitely. So you always go the extra mile and, and add value to people because you might not be getting compensated enough for it right now, but it's going to come around full circle and, and you will get that compensation, whether in knowledge 
or experience or financial or something right and i think that's totally right like you you kind of have to trust that something comes back around to you if you if you're a giver and if you give um even without having the like agenda or expectation that you need to get something back just kind of trusting that something will eventually come back to you um without having that outcome right 100 percent. yeah okay awesome uh bro tell me more like uh, is there anything you want to leave us with any kind of message or, or um, kind of a way to get in touch with you further if you're interested, if someone's interested in learning more? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you for that opportunity also. Yeah. I really appreciate that. No problem. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn linkedin.com. Thanks for slash or, you know, I'll send you the link. <laughs> okay. I'll put the, <laughs> the easiest way to do it. Okay. Um, so I'm on LinkedIn. Um, don't have a website yet up and running, getting that up and running, actually working with somebody else who I found to be another go-giver. Awesome. Um, I'm always happy to just chat and talk to people. Um, so don't feel like, oh, well, I'm not gonna pay him for his services, I don't wanna talk. No, on the contrary, I'd much rather you talk. I'm not expecting it from anything from anybody. Um, but LinkedIn is, is the um, probably the best way as of now. As far as what to leave you guys with, um, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, I would say this, um, this is something my mentor told me also. With anything you want to do in life that you want to be successful with, find somebody who's already there. Mm. Find somebody who's doing it, has done it successfully, and do what they do. Because if you do what they do, there's no reason why you can't receive, achieve the same goals that they've gotten. Mm. And the next step is asking them for their mentorship, asking them for their guidance, you know, asking them for their coaching. Uh, I think one of the biggest things, challenges that we have, and one of the biggest problems that we have is that we don't plug in enough to other people. We don't let other people into our lives and help us out. And that's the exact thing that we need. We need other people to get involved and to help us out, to see things from a different point of view. So whether that's a paid life coach, whether that's a knowledgeable friend, um, or you find somebody, again, in life who's where you want to be and you ask them to coach you. Um, I think it's, it's probably the most, one of the most important things. And just start giving. Um, even if you feel like you've got nothing to give, you know. Uh, in Judaism, we teach the concept if you know Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, if you know Aleph, teach Aleph. If you know something, ah, teach it. Just well, give, 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 and then eventually you'll start receiving. I love that advice. Thank you so much. That's great. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to come do this, do this with me. Uh, this was great. And there's a lot of value here. And uh, um, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. And, and, and thank you for the honor of being able to, to speak to your audience.